Has this ever happened? <laughs> and you feel like doing like this? No chance. Don't throw those broken rods away. I'm going to show you six easy steps how to fix that broken fishing rod and it lives to fish another day. And since he felt that men would be far superior fishermen than women in the future, he wanted to ensure that the vernacular of his fishing rod would match that of his male chauvinistic beliefs. He concluded that the top section of the fishing rod should be called the male ferrule, since men should always be over top of women, and that Karen should be in her rightful place in the kitchen, making him a baloney sandwich. This concludes the history of the vernacular of the fishing rod. <laughs> I thought this was the 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 tree of trust, the the, the nest. It's it, 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 fine. We can make jokes. There's women to think that's funny. How's it going, fishing family? Hey, my name is Trey B, and you're here for one reason and one reason only. That's you've either broke a fishing rod, or you're going to break a fishing rod in the future, and you need to know how to repair that rod and get it back out on the water. Good news, really easy. Six simple steps I'm going to share with you to show you how to repair those rods and get them back out on the water. Let's get our materials together. Let's get our hands dirty. All right, guys, phase one is going to be our planning phase. This is going to be the most crucial part of this entire process so that we end up with a fit and finish that we're happy with, as well as we've got a repair that's going to last for years to come out on the water. So not all breaks are equal. We might be fixing a one piece rod, a two piece rod, a telescopic rod, or a fly fishing rod. Either way, we've got to evaluate where our break is on that rod, if it's in the tail section or the tip section, and plan out our steps accordingly on how we're going to fix it. So the way that we're going to mend our broken fishing rod is by gluing in an internal splint from another fishing rod to bridge the gap between the two broken sections of our fishing rod. So on today's video, I'm going to be going over a two piece repair. This one, luckily the break was right above my male ferrule right on the first guide. So it made accessing this a whole lot simpler because I was able to just feed that splint right through here, get it epoxied in, and then go in and epoxy that tip section. To give you the difference, I'm going to be working on a one piece repair here coming up pretty soon. And the only difference outside of the same steps I'm gonna be following is, I'm going to have to figure out how to access this butt cap. I've gotta be able to get this out without damaging this nice cork handle so that I can access to get my splint into the butt section and work it into the tip section and get it epoxied up. Now that could have also happened on this two piece rod. I just got lucky that the brake was in the tip section and not the butt section of the rod. Had this been in the butt section, I would have had to figure out the same process of getting the butt cap out of the end of here getting that splint in through there, glued up, and then repair my handle, whatever I had to do to get that access point there. All right, guys, at this point, we've got good, solid measurements. We've jotted down good notes, and we've got a step-by-step -step process on how we're gonna plan out and fix these rods. At this point, we're ready for phase two, preparation. Time to get some tools. During this phase, we're going to need an assorted pack of sandpaper. I picked up this pack from Harbor Freight for less than $3. It has 10 sheets with assorted grits of 220, 500, 1000, and 1200. That's going to be perfect. We're also going to need a small hacksaw with a fine tooth blade. Make sure that you don't have a coarse blade on here. We need an X Acto knife or razor blade. We're going to need some of this blue painter's tape. This is going to work perfect. 
We're also going to need a bottle of alcohol so that we can clean up the sections of our rod to make sure we're free of any chemicals or greases. All right, next step, we need to evaluate the break on our fishing rod. What we're looking for are fractures that run parallel up this rod because we're going to have to go back and cut right behind those sections. We don't want any splits in there. We want to get back to a very good sound section of that rod so that when we epoxy our splint in there, we don't have any potential fracturing that may want to split on us in the future. This one looks good. Looks like all I'm going to have to do on this one, honestly, is just square this up. We want to be very sparing on any sections here that we have to remove because when we go to put our splint in, if we remove too much of the rod, due to the taper of that splint, it may not fit tight in one section, and then we might not end up getting a good adhesion between the epoxy on both sides, which could ultimately lead to a catastrophic failure in the future. So be sparing on this. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tear me off a couple sections of this blue painter's tape. And then we're going to apply them to both sections where we're going to be making our cuts. We can get our measurements before on each end so we don't cut more of the rod off than we need. So in this section, I'm only cutting back one quarter of an inch. You can also double and triple up around this, keep it flat. So the purpose of the blue painter's tape is just to help to support the rod when we're cutting through it with our hacksaw. We wanna make sure that we're not fracturing or splintering any of the rod because we want a good sound cut through that. So depending where your specific break is, you might not have to remove any guides to do the repair. Unfortunately, where the break was on this specific rod was in too close proximity to where my break is. So I'm going to have to go ahead and remove this guide first, repair the rod, and then I'll come back later on and reattach this guide back to the finished product. So if you do have to remove a guide because of your specific break, I'll show you how to remove these. It's a real easy process. All that we're gonna need now is just our X-Acto knife. So in the process of removing the guide, we definitely want to take our time. We wanna work through this epoxy slow and methodically. And the purpose is we don't wanna dig in to the blank underneath there, which is our rod section. We don't wanna put any nicks or cuts into it. Basically, once you get one section cleared off from top to bottom here this will peel back and you'll see as I get further into it an important safety tip when you're removing these guides with your exacto knife make sure that you're always cutting away from yourself never pull that blade back towards yourself because you may risk slicing your hand as you can see here I'm starting to get through it now because I'm starting to see the rod I'm using my fingernail once I get down into that and you can start seeing here, right there, that wrap will start to peel back. Once you get to there, you're getting really close. I'm gonna just work real gently with that. See, now I got that one whole section right there off. Yeah, let me see. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I can get my fingernail right up under that or you can use the tip of your razor and i'm working that as you can see now i'm getting down there's that eyelet the metal let's see one more spot up here i may have to do. take just a little bit once again work really slow on these sections you don't want to be biting down into the actual rod itself so there we go it's that simple now our guide's off I'll set this aside, I'll clean this up with some alcohol, and we'll be ready to reattach this later on in the process. All right, we are moving right along to this project. I knew it was gonna be simple. Now we're ready to take both sections of our broken rod, make sure we've got them taped up good, and we're gonna square those up with our hacksaw. So at this point, you want to refer back to any of your measurements that you've jotted down so you'll know exactly how much you wanna cut off of each broken section. So for video sake, I'm holding the rod in this section. I would not suggest doing that. Take and place the rod on the corner of a workbench or a desk. That way the rod is supported and then you can cut the section off. Just make sure that you're working slowly with that hacksaw because you don't want to remove a lot of material at once. 
Also, when you get close to the tail end of the cut, work slow. You don't want that last section breaking off. All right, perfect. Now we've got our first section squared up and ready to go. Now we're just gonna repeat those exact same steps on the other section of our broken rod, and then we'll be on to the splint. Woo, look at the time, you know what it is? It's lunch time. If you haven't been able to tell, I need to do the triple shuffle. <sighs> this was a good point to break it, get some lunch, and we'll pick back up on part two. But before we go, if this information has been helpful for you so far and you like the content, if you wouldn't mind, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button. If you want to keep up with me on future projects or either fishing adventures that I go on, you can also take your mouse, move that cursor right down and hit that red subscribe button down there. Hit that notification bell. And if YouTube is doing their job, anytime I post any new content, you should be notified. Guys, thank you so much. I'm gonna grab some lunch. We'll be back for part two. Hey, Karen, you got my bologna sandwich ready? I'm hungry, woman. <laughs> I, just, I done told you to jump. <laughs>